This is Aisle 42. It's time to talk about water. The average consumption of packaged water is more than 45 gallons per person per year in the U.S., and it outsells all other ready-to-drink beverages. As consumers, we have an insatiable thirst for water, but not all water is equal, and the planet can't sustain the levels of waste that this category generates. And this is why I chatted with Tammy Eckenswater, the co-founder of Flow Alkaline Spring Water, a beloved B Corp company that is making waves across grocery stores, convenience stores, and cafes everywhere. In this episode, you'll learn how they've diverted over 100 million plastic bottles from entering the environment, how they ethically source their natural spring water, how they infuse their water with delicious organic fruits and herbs, and how they level up on the health benefits with vitamins and alkaline. We also talk about corporate responsibility, packaging, and recycling. This is a conversation you're going to love, and considering how much water you likely already buy, I think you'll find it extremely helpful too. So here's Tammy Eckenswater from Flow Alkaline Spring Water. Tammy, thanks so much for doing this. Water is so important, and our grocery stores and our convenience stores are packed with it, but you guys are making something really unique, really beautiful, really delicious. Before we get into all of that, all your product mojo and your sustainability efforts, I have a warm-up question for you. If you were to imagine the perfect grocery store of the future, what would it look like? I think I would like to see a grocery store that is a little bit more curated based on meals and occasions instead of departments. <laughs> But that's my personal preference. I just think it would be easier if you could go and look for, I don't know, all the ingredients that you need for pumpkin pie in like one place or um, everything you need to throw like a party for eight people. The party aisle. Yeah, it's something a little bit more curated. And I think it would be great to see like, you know, a B Corp aisle or B Corp area where, you know, that was a little bit more front and center. I think that the design of retail and grocery as we know it would, it would be interesting to disrupt that. As in like the physical space changing these physical experiences that we're having? Yeah. I think it's more conducive to consumers learning about products it feels like it it is, which was, it was created many, many years ago. <laughs> and I think it's probably very difficult for the, the bigger corporations to, to change because there's a lot of reasons why it's designed that way. But I don't know if it necessarily the best experience for consumers. That's what I would say. Good answer. Good answer. So for those that don't know about Flow, as maybe as well as I do, I would love for you to share with everyone a little bit more about what you guys make, and uh, like you guys have a whole bunch of products. So give us the scoop on what you guys do. So Flow is a sustainable spring water company. We currently have a spring in South Bruce, Ontario, Canada, and we also have a spring in Verona, Virginia, in the U.S. So the highest quality spring water that you can get on the market right now. And I say that with absolute confidence because all you have to do is look at our total dissolved solids analysis, which is we keep on the bottle for that reason, because it is so special. And what makes a high quality spring water worth bottling, because I think that's the first thing, is there's not much point in drinking purified tap water out of a plastic bottle if you're actually going to buy a product. You want that water to be something that is better than the water that you can get out of your tap. And it is. It's um, the mineral content of flow is very important, especially right now, because people are very mineral deprived. We're mineral deprived because our soil minerals are depleting, which is an unfortunate result of climate change, of industrial agriculture, I imagine, is a a big part of it. And we need those minerals. Those minerals are all electrolytes for the most part, the minerals in flow. So not only are you getting additional electrolytes, which is 
on the market currently, Flow has the highest level of electrolytes of any water that I've been able to find. So that's pretty exciting because we all have, you know, there's a lot of a lot of packages of electrolytes that you can add to your water. But it'd be great if you could just buy water that already had electrolytes. So that's one factor. And then the second part of our product, I think that's really special, is when we add functional ingredients like vitamins um, that are good for immunity. We have that. We have an energy water that's coming out that's going to have, this is going to be helpful for focus. It's going to have caffeine and L-theanine. And then there's lovely organic flavors, which are like, they're like essences. So it's kind of like, you know, like aromatherapy. <laughs> So it doesn't have, it doesn't add calories to the water, but it adds a nice taste for people who are not so into just the taste of water, which I totally understand. So yeah, that's that's flow. And it also comes in, of course, the most sustainable package on the market right now. And when I say sustainable, I mean sustainable as opposed to recyclable, because just because something's a package is recyclable, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a sustainable package. And what is also special about Flow is that we have the highest B Corp score in our category, and that's 126.5, and that's a very high score. We're up there just under Patagonia, which is considered to be like one of the biggest benchmarks for B Corp. So I think that's really important. And B Corp scores, what is important about a company being a B Corp company is that it's not just about the product itself. Like it's not just that, okay, it's, I don't know, it's tap water that's been put in a can, which is, you know, infinitely recyclable, as they say. Plastic is also infinitely recyclable. (laughs) So the sustainability aspect of infinitely recyclable is not necessarily the case. That just depends actually on all of the other aspects of the business and what composes the the packaging. So in the case of aluminum, it depends on how much aluminum is recyclable and how much of it is virgin aluminum because aluminum is actually has a pretty hefty carbon footprint because they have to mine the ingredient, which I can't remember, that makes the aluminum and that they have to go through a huge process, uh, industrial process to create the aluminum. So not the most sustainable process. So Tetra Pak has been, you know, pretty much a leader in the industry as far as sustainable packaging. And, you know, they ensure that we have FSC forestry um, paper, which is very important. So it's sustainably farmed paperboard. We also have sustainably sustainably farmed sugarcane, which is the cap and the, the mouth part. And then our water the water itself. We sustainably source our water and we protect our springs. We only take 2% of the natural flow of, of the spring per year of the output of the spring. So we ensure that there's enough water left over for generations to come. We're not just trying to take as much as we can. I don't think, I don't know what we would do with that much water, you know, in terms of our transportation, in terms of how we run our business. So a B Corp company when you're assessed, they look at the whole company, all of the production, all of the, how you run your company, not just the product or the packaging itself. You covered it all. I hope I did. I love it. Okay. That's a wrap. No. <laughs> so good. I really appreciate the, the deep dive there. I think when I look at all of the places and spaces that we see flow in market and all the I mean, I feel like I'm grabbing for one on a, a quite often. It's amazing just to see how the brand is growing and how excited people are to consume it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play uh, I'm play, play stupid for a second, and I actually don't have to work hard at this one. For all the value adds that you guys bring to the table with vitamins and with minerals. Um, alkaline, I feel a little alkaline stupid. Could you walk us through a little bit about what is alkaline? Why is it important to have in your water? I think alkaline is a little, it's tricky because there hasn't been a lot of substantiated research around the benefits of alkaline water, although you you hear about it quite a lot. So we focus less on 
the alkalinity aspect for that reason, but the minerals that flow has many of, like magnesium, calcium, uh, potassium, sodium. Sodium sounds like a bad thing, but it's not. It's actually, if you're buying electrolyte powder, there's always lots of sodium in there. Those minerals and also calcium by and the bicarbonate, which is essentially like an like a baking soda would be a bicarbonate that brings the water pH to a higher level. So we are eight point one at the source. Tap water is typically a seven pH, and that's because it can't go higher than that because the minerals will build up in the pipe, in, in the pipes and block the pipes. They actually, it becomes like crystals. I don't know if you've ever been to like a, like a hot spring. Have you ever gone into a hot spring and you see kind of the crystallations that form? We went to Iceland last year and went to the Blue Lagoon and you see the buildup of the minerals on the side. That happens in the pipes. And that's the reason why our tap water can't have a higher alkalinity where, where I'm sure it would in certain areas because some areas have beautiful water, but they have to bring the, alkal- the the pH down for that reason. So I think it's less about the alkalinity and more about the mineral content, which is we just need on a, on a daily basis. We are constantly low on, on minerals in our bodies. I think you understand what I mean when you feel like at the end of the day, if you feel really depleted or after a workout and then you drink a water like flow, it's always a good test. Drink a water like flow and then just drink your tap water and you'll see the difference. Like it's, you know, it helps to replenish those minerals that, that we use on a daily basis that we're constantly burning. So I think the pH part of it, there is some evidence to suggest that it helps with acid reflux. That is what our legal team will tell us that we are allowed to talk about. That would be awkward to put right on the package, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, you can't do that. And that's why education is so important. It's so important to talk to people about it because water is so fundamental. We don't realize how important it is. When you go to Starbucks or you go to Tim Hortons or whatever it is that you like for coffee, the water that they're using, you're consuming it. And it's important because you want to make sure that it's, it's decent. You wouldn't want to get sick. And it's the same thing with every aspect of like all the things that we consume that have water in them. Um, Unfortunately, it's more and more difficult to get water that has good minerals in it for us that are helping to nourish our bodies. There's less and less of that in the world because as we keep recycling the water that our municipal water, those minerals are they're getting we're getting they're getting less and less minerals in the in in our tap water. And that's the that's the truth. Like if you're gonna and if you're going to spend the money on buying packaged water, it should be good water that's worth the carbon footprint that it has, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, the water category is is such a it's a packed category. Grocery stores have so much packaged water and so much plastic. And so this water is, you know, how good is it doing people? So I like the the approach that you and your team take on this. One of the things that, and this is personal, I feel like, yeah, I'm grabbing flow water, especially when I've just done either it's a big workout or it's like a big hike or something where my, I, I feel depleted. It's it's one of the products that I, I reach for. And one of the things that I really appreciate, and I've, especially in travel, I've spent time in Africa many, many times working and it was just like, you know, hydration is just so critical. And it's these little packets of things that we're adding to our waters to bring up our, you know, to get our body to do what it needs to do. One of the complaints I have of those things is that they're flavor bullies and they're overwhelming. And they're, as you pointed out, they're often really salty, like too salty. And it sort of, it makes the whole thing feel very medicinal or very overly practical. And really, I just want to get hydrated. I just want to feel better. And one of the things I love about what you guys are doing is, and you mentioned earlier, that the flavors that you're doing, they're 
they're infused, they're subtle, they're sort of a, a hint, a suggestion of something. And But one of the things I notice in your packaging is you call out that a lot of these ingredients are organic. So you're using like organic strawberries. Actually, I have it right here, organic strawberry rose. What is it about choosing organic ingredients for these infuses that makes the most, like, why are you guys making these choices to choose organic? Well, I think it aligns with the brand. I, I think we, again, if you're going to package, if you're going to go through the effort, we wanted to make sure that the options were worthy of being of the carbon footprint of putting them into a package as opposed to just like packaging tap water or reverse osmosis, which is essentially purified tap water. So there's no minerals in there to speak of. In the case of like a smart water, it's purified tap water. And then they actually have to go back and add back some minerals, very, very few, like a tiny, tiny bit, just to make it taste better which is fascinating. So they went through the process of first they took them out and then they had to put them back in, which is pretty wasteful, actually. It's so funny, you know, when you think about it, it's not very smart. (laughs) So I think organic, choosing organic essences was very important to us to align with, you know, we have these beautiful minerals, the both springs. We didn't decide that these springs were the, the best water generations and generations of Canadians and Americans and even Aboriginals have been going to these springs for water for genera- for many generations. So we knew, you know, 200 years ago that this was great water and we were drinking it. But somehow I think we lost the point of water in, in some ways. And we have this idea that like water's, water, all water is the same. It's not actually, it's, it's really so fundamentally important for our health. And, you know, you can work out and spend tons of money on, on working out and buying organic food and all these things. But if your water that you're hydrating with many times a day, isn't on that level, you know, it's sort of a contradiction. So I think it's like, it's fundamental. And that's the reason why we wanted to make sure that the ingredients were as good as the water. What are some of the ingredients you're using? I mentioned strawberry and a a rose petal, but what are some of the other ingredients you guys put into your products? Vitamin C, zinc, um, caffeine, but caffeine, everyone needs caffeine. It's good quality caffeine. (laughs) You got to have, you know, um, most of our, like all of our flavors are organic flavors. So we have cherry, the world famous award-winning um, cucumber mint. It's not my favorite, but lots of people love it. I don't know. It's not my, it's not my favorite flavor. I don't mean to criticize anybody who likes it, but I don't know why it's not. I also hate cucumber water. Uh, mint, give or take, but cucumber is, uh, I'm offended by it. It's something about it I really dislike. So we're in the same same camp there. It's I think it's a spa. Like it's the reason that people like it is because it, it's it gives them the feeling of going to the spa. I love lemon. Like the lemon immunity water is really is really good. It's my favorite. Despite having strawberry on my desk right now, the lemon one is my favorite. Yeah, it's really great. So yeah, and we're actually reformulating to replace the erythritol with monk fruit because there was one study that came out that was talking about some issues with it in terms of it's only one study but still we spoke to the um the our buyer at whole foods and we talked about it and he said that he doesn't think that it's the biggest deal but monk fruit's probably better. So we always try because he's very in touch with the consumers as well. His name is Dave Lafferty. He's a great source of information. It's super important because the nice thing that we, you know, you got to remember with buyers is that they know their customers, right? So they can be a great source for, for brands as well to get, to get good information and make choices about things. Sometimes it's hard to know what the best choice is. So they're on top of all the trends as well. So, <laughs> Excellent. 
You've been B Corp certified for a few years now, and I've poured over your sustainability accounting standards board index report. There's a mouthful. Insert nerdy emoji here. Oh, you're you a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. It's not my fault. You guys made it, um, but I did read it. Can you share a little bit about the journey your team has taken to kind of gone the journey to go through this level of accountability and this transparency that a lot of water brands don't do? You know, we just kind of did it. Like, I think part of what... By accident? <laughs> you no, know, I mean, we knew we wanted to and we knew it was important. And, you know, you just go through it. Like, it. it's it's hard. It's really difficult. And it's especially for, for smaller brands and because it's, it's expensive, you know, you have to work with them to, um, to do all the assessments and you have to make changes, you know, as per the request, which cost, you know, often are, you're choosing to give up some of your margin and that's what it is. It costs more money in order to be more eco-friendly. Hope, hopefully there will come a time when that won't be the case. But currently, that's a big barrier. And we just, because I guess, because we didn't know what we were doing when we started, it allowed us to be more, you know, optimistic and and just like, we're going to do this, like, and we're going to make it happen. And we did. And we continue to keep trying. You know, we're, we are always pushing Tetra Pak for more. And there's there's a lot of big things coming in terms of increasing our sustainability with Tetra Pak. Tetra Pak is a big company, so it takes time. And Europe is actually further ahead than North America in terms of the equipment that's needed and the training, because you have to train people as well. But we just, we have a really great like team of people that we work with on our team. There's this gentleman named Dane, and he's a sustainability environmental lawyer and he works with you know he works with our hydrologists and like we have a hydrologist like who that's helped. so cool <laughs> it is pretty cool I met the first time when we first started the company and we were at the spring in in Ontario and I got to meet her and have a discussion <laughs> about all of it you know like why the water comes up the way it does I was like how old is the water for real because it's essentially could be like 3,000 to 5,000 year old rainwater, which is kind of cool when you think about it, that falls and then it filters down and then it gets collected and it collects those minerals from, from the rock that's under there. And then it gets pushed back up again. It's fascinating. And how to protect that and ensure that there's no nothing, you're not doing anything around the springs. Like that just so you know, the springs don't look like, like are you imagine like when you look on the Fiji site and it's like beautiful tropical. I was going to say something like Moana. I know that doesn't sound very Ontario, but something like Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, but they don't because you can't build a bottling facility or anything really much at the springs because it can damage the ecology of the springs. So you have to leave them alone. Yeah. So we essentially, you have like, we just have this tiny little shack looking thing and we just try to protect the area and ensure that making sure that the tree, everything's healthy around it, the trees and planting trees. And you have to constantly be testing to make sure there's nothing that's somehow getting into it and all of these kinds of, and also, you know, there's a certain amount of lobbying of the government to ensure that environmental protections are supporting the industry because sometimes you know one industry can damage another one if you're not careful so because not every every industry or brand is as as protective of the environment as we are so we have to be careful about that so yeah it's uh it's not how you think though it doesn't I mean, Bruce County is beautiful. Uh, South Bruce County is beautiful, but it doesn't look like a tropical, you know, waterfall. Springs look different than that. In they can just be like basically, it looks like almost like a like a little stream or river with sort of a lake pond area, and there's a spot and different spots where the water is just coming up. 
it's just flowing up and it's kind of bubbling on the surface. That's about it. That's amazing. Yeah, so understated. I love the idea, by the way, of maybe updating Google Maps. So when people search your company, they get a picture of this little shack in the middle of some wooded area. <laughs> it's really what it's like. It is. That's what it is. It's a shack in a wooded area. I love it. And knowing that you've got, you know, access to these springs that are, you know, one in Canada and one in the United States and that you're bottling and uh, delivering water in these two countries, you know, we're all very familiar with a lot of import water brands, you know, we're putting water on container ships and floating it across the ocean. I mean, sometimes I feel like import, and I don't mean to be mean, but sometimes when I see import water brands, it's like, I feel like I'm buying a logo. (laughs) And uh, in the water world, it's nice to know that locally sourced water, like regionally sourced water is being, you know, packaged up and we're, we're consuming like as, as a Canadian consuming Canadian spring water. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And U.S. is U.S. And that was our goal as well. We wanted to make sure we could call out that we have great water here. We actually have, as I said, and I stand by it, we have the best mineral profile of any spring water on the market right now. That's bold. There's lots of people that would get all hot and bothered about that. (laughs) Yes. There are a few sparkling mineral waters that are higher in mineral content, but they are not super well known. So I am a fan of one. I have it here. That's a really great brand. How do you pronounce that? I I stumble every time I try. Gerald Steiner. I'm recovering from a cold, like a cold. And so I'll get some to help me with that because it's very high. It's like, I think the second highest in the world for um, total dissolved solids. So it still comes on a container ship because it's from Germany, but it's the one time that I'll purchase a a um, non-domestic, well, flow, really. There you go. So, yeah. yeah. (laughs) But yeah, it's, uh, it's strange. There's a lot of, there's, I know like liquid death had, had a term called it's called mountain water. By the way, that's not a that's not a term that's recognized by the FDA in the US. It hasn't come to Canada yet, but it's on its way. And the reason that they use mountain water is because it's not spring water. And in order to be spring water or mineral water, flow classifies as both. You have to have a certain level of mineral content. And so clearly they don't. <laughs> So that's how you know. Yeah, it's good. Mountain water, glacial water, those are not terms that are defined by the, the FDA. So that means that they're not recognized. So it's like a marketing term. That's why it's in bunny ears. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. M- mountain water. I, I remember glacial water. I was like, oh, it sounds amazing. You know what? Maybe it's all one word and it's got a little trademark next to it. Mountain water, all one word, no space between. Yeah, see us marketers. Here we go again. I know. <laughs> Amazing. Man. So where do people find Flow? Uh, where can they learn more? You can go to flowhydration.ca or flowhydration.com. And on our about page, we have all about our sustainability. You can check us out on TikTok or on Instagram. We're at Flow on Instagram. And I can't, I have to remember, I think it's at Flow on TikTok as well. And I hate to say that I don't re- remember for sure. But don't worry, we'll drop it in the show notes. It's all good. And honestly, you can email me if you want to. It's Tammy at flowhydration.com. Man, that's very open and honest of you. I get questions all the time. It's okay. I don't mind. (laughs) So good. Thanks so much for doing this. Appreciate all that you and your team are doing. And it's a beautiful product. And I love seeing it all the places that, especially those on the go places that, you know, you're just craving water that's actually going to help and their flow is. Oh, Starbucks. That sounded poetic. Their flow is. You know, we took, I was reading the flow, the book about the psychology of happiness when we were coming up with the name and so that's where it comes from so i'm happy to hear it makes you happy (laughs) excellent good deal thanks for this tammy have a great day and thank you for doing this this is great that you're doing this for our consumers it's great 
Isn't Tammy great? I hope you enjoyed this chat about all things water. Please head on over to flowhydration.com. Check out their amazing selection of infused and flavored waters. And if you're curious, download their sustainability report. On behalf of my entire team here at Ethical Food Group, thanks for listening to Owl 42 and for all your shares and reviews. I'm Corwin Hebert, and I'll see you in the future.